Double ring bioreactor, one year later. Let's open it up and see what the compost inside looks like. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm Diego, D-I-E-G-O, and my goal is to help you streamline gardening, to make gardening easier for busy people using smart design. One way you can use design to your advantage in a garden is through composting. How you compost, what type of tool you use to compost, affects how much work you have to put into making compost. If you think about a traditional compost pile, they're usually actively aerated compost piles. You have to turn them. Now, some people enjoy that work, but nonetheless, it is work, it takes time. When you use a design like this, a passive design, a bioreactor, you take the work that you would actively put into it and you trade it for time in the field. So instead of trying to get compost quicker by turning it, you allow the bioreactor to just sit here and it's gonna take longer to make finished compost, but you're not doing any work during that time while the composting process is taking place. This is a bioreactor design that I came up with last year. It's been sitting here for 12 months. It has a two foot diameter inner core to allow for airflow. It has a six foot diameter outer ring, which holds the contents in. The contents in this case were straight horse manure. This was filled to the tippy top with horse manure one year ago. And we have a two foot gap between the inner ring and the outer ring where the manure sat. For the past 12 months, I haven't done anything to this pile except for water it. So here it sat. Let's now open it up one year later and see what the compost inside looks like. But before we open it, I want to give you some thoughts on this bioreactor design as a whole because this was a theoretical design that became a reality and it's now been tested in the field for the past year. First thoughts, not related to this design, but more related to what went into this design, manure. Number one, it composts really well. If you can find a clean source of material that isn't potentially tainted with persistent herbicides, I love using manure as compost because it just has that right carbon and nitrogen ratio to break down. If you can get it for free, all the better. One thing about manure when it composts is you start with a lot of manure and you end up with a much, much smaller amount of compost. This reactor was filled to the top. It settled down to about here. It was refilled to the top about two weeks later. And now it has settled way down to here. So you had a massive amount of settling. So don't think if you fill this bioreactor to the tippy top, you're gonna get that much compost. You're probably gonna get a third of this out as finished compost. Now it's more concentrated because it's a lot of the particle, the void space is gone. It's biologically active. So it's a good thing you got all this compost, but it's not as much as if you filled it to the tippy top. Another observation is this composting unit is big. A six foot diameter circle is big in person. It might be too big for my scale. I don't have a huge property. I don't have a huge garden area. If I put a bunch of these in it, I'd be using a lot of my garden area to make compost. So for me, this design might be too large. If you had a bunch of space, I think this design is great because why not make more in one shot if you can, if you have the room? If you have limited space, I think this is overkill. Another observation, I think it worked really well. Given all that settling, we can see that the composting process has taken place and so far, so good. So the design itself has proven to be success. Now we'll open it up and see what it looks like. Before we open the reactor up, I wanna show you a few other things that I did to help with the composting process. One was I covered the surface of the composting contents with some cover crop that I chopped down. I mulched the soil surface. I was having um, problems keeping the soil surface nice and moist. So I figured why not just use some of the cover crop and set it on top. If the biology, the worms and stuff eats that mulch that I'm putting in there, so be it. But in the meantime, it protects the soil surface from drying out. So if you want a way to keep your compost pile more moist, consider just mulching the top of it. No harm done. One other thing I did on the outside was I mulched around the bottom of the reactor itself. I was putting mulch in the pathways and I thought, eh, why don't I just push mulch all the way up the side of the reactor itself? 
help hold in moisture around the bottom of the reactor and potentially stimulate more biology by just putting the mulch in contact with what I want to compost on the inside. A lot of people have asked in the comments how you get the contents out of the bioreactor and it's simple. You just open up the outer ring and then you have access to what's inside. Outer ring on the reactor removed and we can see the contents on the inside. Now here's what's left. And it looks like this. We went from this to this. Looking at the contents, I'm pretty happy with them. There's been a great breakdown of the manure. There are some roots that I am finding inside the content itself, which is one of the worries about these ground contact piles. The benefit of ground contact is you get biology from the ground that can migrate into the pile to help break down the manure. So you get worms that can automatically come up, other types of decomposer organisms that can just come up into the pile. The negative is when the worms come up, the roots do too. So I don't know, I'm kind of mixed about this whole pallet thing. I'd almost rather lift it up, keep the roots out and add the worms myself than let nature do it. You know, think about that on your own scale. You're in your own context. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily. You just need to think about your own context, where you're composting, and then do the method that's going to work best. Observations after looking inside. It composted well. Now in full disclosure, manure is going to compost well whether you just make a pile on the ground or whether you put it in some sort of fancy composting system. So I can't attribute the success in composting the manure to the reactor itself. It's gonna happen regardless of how we do it. That being said, the reactor is a great way to encourage the composting process in a way that's manageable for gardeners. In other words, we can create a way to kind of contain this, keep it moist and control the composting process somewhat by providing some structure. And that is what the bioreactor did well. It allowed me to build a tower of manure in a relatively small space versus a big conical pile, which would take up more space for the same amount of material. So that made it a success. The reactor design also makes it nice and easy to water because it's easier to water a flat surface than it is to water a cone. And it's easier to cover this with a tarp if you needed to than trying to cover a big conical pile with a tarp. The design itself, I really like it, but I think it's too big for my scale. If I had a bunch of land, I'd probably build about 10 of these, fill one every six months, and then just cycle through them over four or five years, refilling as needed. That's how I would use this going forward in the future. Well, what about the biology? Are you gonna take this to a lab? Or are you gonna ha look at it under a microscope to see if it's better than a traditional compost pile? No, I think that's overkill. I think we still have so much to learn about soil that even if we knew what the biology in this compost was, it's really hard to say that this would be, quote, better than some other compost. This is good. What you make in a compost pile in your backyard, just piling it up, is also good. So I'm not gonna get nuanced here and try and say that this is better than something else. I don't really believe that. What next for this compost? I'm just gonna take all of this and spread it out on the garden bed right here. I'm trying to build up the soil in this garden bed, both in height and in organic matter. So I'm just gonna move all this from here right over to here and then I'll plant tomatoes into it in the spring. There you have it, the Diego Double Ring Bioreactor one year later. Success, it made compost easy, and it was a fun experiment. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.